Hello, and thank you for having me. My name is Chingun Krobitar, and I'm an undergraduate student at the University of Wisconsin-La Crosse. I'm currently studying exercise and sports science with an emphasis in fitness. And in this study, we looked at the intra and inter device test to retest reliability of a commercially available BIA device in high school athletes. So the use of these commercially available bioelectrical impedance analysis devices may offer a convenient option for assessing body composition, specifically in a field-based setting where having an underwater weighing and dex at hand may not be the most practical when assessing body compositions of multiple different athletes. However, the problem is, is that the reliability and the validity of these newer BIA devices still remains unknown. So the purpose of the study was to assess the accuracy and reliability of specifically the in-body H2O BIA device. And we were looking to find a practical and affordable field-based body composition tool that could provide not only accurate, but also reliable body composition assessments, specifically for athletic populations. In our study, we recruited 59 high school and collegiate athletes competing in various sports ranging from football to powerlifting to track and field to tennis to swimming and etc. And upon arrival, hydration status was assessed using a urine specific gravity device. In order to indicate U hydration, a USG measurement of 1.02 or less is required of athletes because hydration status can drastically affect BIA results. The athletes were then asked to complete two different in body H2O BIA device measurements, stepping on device one two times and stepping on device two two times. After the BIA measurements, the athletes' body compositions were measured using underwater weighing, which was our criterion measure for the study. And for underwater weighing, we utilized the Brozac equation to determine body fat percentages. Our results show that the in-body H2O device had very strong inter and intra device reliability. It also yielded us a body fat percentage of about 2% less than our criterion measure, which was underwater weighing. And in conclusion, the in-body H2ON demonstrated very strong intra and inter device reliability. There was a significant difference in body fat percentages values derived from underwater weighing compared to the BIA device, with the BIA device tending to underestimate body fat percentage compared to our criterion measure. The use of the in-body H2O device may serve as a practical body composition tool for athletes because the device showed precise intra-device and inter-device reliability, making it reliable. While yielding a significant mean bias, it may still be practical to use and within the acceptable ranges of measurement error. So hydrostatic moiety may cost over several thousand dollars to operate, and it might not be the most time efficient or practical for settings such as high school athletics. Despite having different results from our criterion measure, the cost to benefit ratio for the in-body H2ON is very affordable and practical approach to assessing body composition for athletes. Some limitations and future investigations. We were not able to get the approval for the use of a dual energy X-ray absorptionometry device or a DEXA scan. And we believe that this might've been a limitation as this would have served as a better criterion measure as we would have been able to formulate a four compartment model than using underwater weighing alone. Future research is also needed to compare various BIA devices to other criteria on body composition measures to establish an accurate and practical field-based body composition test. Future research should also examine the reliability of BIA devices over time and the sensitivity to detect changes in body composition. And this was our reference. We utilized the Brozac equation for hydrostatic weighing. Thank you.